Hey, everybody, this is Dr. Drew. Uh, I want to thank our sponsors over at Third Love for supporting the show. And I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. But right now, let's get on with the show. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. And welcome to another Dr. Drew After Dark. Uh, don't forget to send us those emails at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. And of course, the voice messages. We are very pleased that you continue to supply us with lots of great questions at 818-253-1693. Again, 818-253-1693. And uh, this is a very special Dr. Drew After Dark mm-hmm. podcast. Uh, and a first for all you mommies out there, you get to meet Leanne Kreischer. Welcome, Leanne Kreischer. How Hi. are you? I'm good. A lot of excitement. You notice all the excitement here at the Dr. Draft Dark podcast? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, I did, oh, but yes. I, not for me. You're it's a for... huge celebrity in the world of, <laughs> of young, young, young... I don't know. Your mom's house. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, so... You're, you're also, you're also though, somewhat of a mystery. So we're going to sort of <laughs> peel back the curtain a little bit on that mystery that is Leanne Kreischer. Such as, uh, let's start, let's just start easy. Just, just breathe deeply. We're okay, all very excited. <laughs> We've got videos for you. We've got a whole thing lined up. So where'd you grow up? I grew up in Bowden, Georgia and Atlanta, Georgia. Bowden is about uh, 45 miles west of of atlanta uh-huh. 1800 people and uh that's sort of towards buckhead that way or no, no, the other way it's straight between atlanta and birmingham okay in the middle of and nowhere you, what'd your folks do my dad's a mechanic mm-hmm. and my parents divorced when i was seven before my parents divorced my mom worked in a factory sewing mm-hmm. men's suits interesting and then uh so real full like old-fashioned american labor jobs total blue yeah, collar yeah. yeah of my dad's parents had a farm my mom's parents had a farm wow. big farms like 100 acre farms cattle did they still have them when you were growing up yeah my grandmother passed away three years ago still has the farm wow. my dad has it now crazy uh yeah so i worked on the farm a lot as a kid uh you know raised a calf every year for money and uh, it was really fun. But when my parents divorced, my mom moved to Atlanta to become a model. Mm. She was the highest paid model in Atlanta for about nine years. And she worked a lot in Italy. Um, Crazy. How old was she? She was an older model. Um, I guess by that time she was about 27. Wow. Is that something she always wanted to do? or? Yeah, it oh was. You know, they kind of... They kind of have a cool, they were high school sweethearts and my mom worked in this factory to pay my dad's way through vocational school mm. to become a mechanic. And he opened his own shop and then he said, you know, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Do you want to go back to college? What do you want to do? And she wanted to model. So he Uh-oh. sent her to Barbizon. Is that why their relationship fell apart? Uh, I, I think it's part of it. Yeah. Um, you probably don't know much about my history. A lot of the mommies might, but my mom has a personality disorder. So that's why it fell apart. Um, Borderline? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, she's very, very narcissistic. Mm -hmm. And she has a lot of sociopathic stuff, too. Ooh, she's a sociopath. Yeah, so so fun to grow up like that. (laughs) No, I imagine not. Uh, It was Was it sort of Mommy Dearest stuff? Yes, it was very Mommy Dearest. It was... um, you know, she just divorced her sixth husband. Oh, is she, I, she bipolar? I don't know. Uh. She's never been diagnosed because there's nothing wrong with her. Right, right. She's perfect. Well, that's the personality disorder. When you have personality exactly. disorder, it's the whole... It's me. It's the whole, I'm fine, the world is the problem. Right. Well, I was the problem growing up. I'm only uh. child. Uh. So... Um, you, you and I actually did discuss this one time. I right? think yeah. maybe. Yeah, but keep going. Um, but yeah, so that that's really why their relationship fell apart. Really. So if I could have a camera for a second... So if you wonder how she can put up with Bert Kreischer, here's, here's the <laughs> foundation for this. Bert is nothing compared to a sociopathic mom. Just, no. Just saying. Uh, you are 100% right. I, I, people constantly say to me, I don't know how you live with Bert. You must be the most patient person on the planet. And I'll tell you what, my mom got custody of me when I was seven. And the judge, I remember the judge saying, at 13, you can choose where you want to live. And I went, tick tock, I just got to wait till I'm 13. Then you went back to your dad. Yeah. And so for those six years, it was abusive and yelling. It was awful. Yelling. It was so bad that our neighbor across the street uh, had my best friend, Becky, lived across the street from me in middle school. And they bought a big piece of land and built this brand new house. And her dad sat me down and said, we have built a room in your house. And we would like to legally adopt you from your wow. mother. Because <laughs> they heard the yelling? Uh, I think they heard the yelling. They heard the men coming in and out. They saw, I, I was really... Um, withdrawn when I was with her 
And then when I was not with her, I was more relaxed and more mm-hmm. personable. So I, I really protected myself with her by not not showing her any part of who I was. Did you know you were doing that at the time? Yes, I did. Yeah. I made a conscious choice. Did, yeah. you, did she physically abuse too or? Uh, well, I mean, she spanked me, but nothing. Nothing big. Nothing outside so, of So did mommy do? I, I had a big dose of that too. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really hard when you become an adult, I think, because you have no modeling, right, for what's healthy. I did in that my dad's a pretty sweet, pretty, um, I don't mean simple as a bad thing. I mean, very kind of like what you see is what you get yeah. guy yeah. and uh, never left his hometown. So I think going back to that every summer was really important. During those six years. That's right. And then you moved in with him after that? That's right. So it sort of saved you from some of the stress of all that. It did, the, yeah. It's interesting. It is interesting. It is, interesting. It, it is very interesting. And, and it, you kind of go into survival mode, but it does make you tolerant of a lot. It makes you tolerant of a lot, and I think sometimes in an unhealthy way. Oh, tell us. Well, I mean, you know, I definitely, definitely have chosen in a lot of situations to put Bert's feelings or Bert's needs in front of my own, which is kind of what typical. you grew up doing. Typical. That's yeah. typical. A hundred percent. Yeah. Typical. And sometimes I know I'm doing it when I'm doing it and I get really upset with myself, mm-hmm. but it's hard sometimes to know what else to do or how to speak up for yourself because that was not, you know, that was not okay. Did you ever have any therapy or anything? Oh, I've been in therapy for years. Yeah. Did that help? Yeah. That helped. Oh yeah, yeah. It's helped a lot. Yeah. It's helped a lot. Before therapy, were you having a lot of anxiety and panic and that sort of thing or depression? No, uh, or? I drank six days a week. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I did not know that. I did. I was a very heavy drinker. I started drinking when I was 13. Oh, goodness. And I drank until I was about 21. I think my 21st birthday, okay. I drank Enter like a Bert Kreischer. fifth of vodka. So yeah. did he, did he, were you drinking buddies at first? I met Bert when I was 31. So I stopped drinking when I was 21. Uh, At 21, I had an enlarged liver and had yeah. lost my hair. Yeah. And so um, women, for the listeners, women get liver disease really easily from alcohol. Yeah. It was bad. Seven times the rate of men. I didn't know that. Mm. Um, you, you miss, you lack an enzyme in your stomach to break it down into something less, less toxic. So. Well, at that point, I was like, so I'm, the, so the I'm off goes. in a ditch, right? My my health is off in a ditch. And I just want to be happy, and I don't know how to be happy. So I stopped everything. I stopped. Um, I had no relationships with men for like seven years. Not that I was super promiscuous. I was just like, I got to figure myself out. Mm-hmm. And I didn't drink anything for seven or eight years at all. And now I drink maybe one glass of wine a week. I just don't. I think I'd, I medicated the trauma. Mm-hmm. And once I dealt with the trauma... The alcohol didn't mean anything for me. Did you have trauma therapy? No, I just went to therapy. Therapy, therapy. So, okay, that's unusual. So anybody else heavy drinking out there, don't get any ideas. It's it's, it's (laughs) relatively unusual to stop on your own. It's unusual to have trauma therapy alone sufficient to stop the drinking. So, I've always wondered about that because I've always thought, I, I don't think I, I think at the time I was definitely headed to being an alcoholic. But maybe I, not, maybe, maybe not, but you, but you have to really lose control. And it sounds like you were sort of in control, even though it was very heavy. Well, I was arrested for drunk driving. Mm-hmm. I was vandalizing things. I was yeah, racing but, while drunk, but, racing cars. And, but not, but that sounds like it was willful. It was willful yeah. misbehavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So, no. okay, so make, make notes, everybody. Uh, Leanne, <laughs> Leanne the, the rebel, <laughs> the wildling. Uh, she, she, literally, yeah. she was uh, raised outside the, the wall in the, in the south. Uh, she's a wildling. Um, I was a wildling. I never thought of that. I feel. I feel like. And was Bert John Snow? I'm not sure. No, he's a wild. He's a. I'm not sure he's. He John might Snow. be a White Walker, but but, <laughs> but, but, I, but I think he's a wildling too. Uh, he yeah. might be a or wildling might, too. Yeah, it makes sense. The crazy and then redhead certainly, guy. Certainly, your daughters sort yeah. of have wildling qualities, right? One of them for sure. That's Ginger, though. G- Georgia, rather. No, well, no, Georgia. Georgia you said she was like Bert. She, here's the thing. Before Bert became the machine, mm-hmm. right, in college. Sorry about that, by the way. Sorry about what? I was the one that made him tell that story publicly the first time. No, you no, 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 no. Okay. Sorry about all right. that. Okay. We're all, right. all glad about okay, that. Good. All right. You know, he was really nervous to tell me that story. <laughs> really nervous to tell me that story. It's so funny. He's nervous. He's nervous to tell any story until he does. Then he tells everybody. And he tells <laughs> everybody, right? From then on. I know. I, I always say to him, you have intimacy problems, but not publicly. Right. Right. You well, have that's, no public so, intimacy problems. So before we go to your daughters, tell me about the intimacy problems. When, when does that come up? When, it, not with me. Oh? No, 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 not with me. But like with, with friends. 
Like, does he does he appreciate what you put up with? He does. Does he uh, call you a saint? He does. Okay, good. Uh, you know, he's really good at sending me a random postcard or letter telling me what I mean to him. Uh -oh. the, the thing about Bert is he there's shades of my mom in Bert. Shades of the of shades of the psychopathic mommy dearest well, mom. Well, well, well. We're gonna have to put a wig on Bert and, I, I know, right? and see how that comes across. No, really, it's the narcissism. Uh, right. Bert's narcissistic. My mom's very narcissistic. Uh, so Yeah, but I I but I would call Bert now listen, this is a I'm splitting hairs here a little bit, but I would call Bert more self preoccupied yes. than narcissistic. Yes, it's you're different. probably right. It's different. It is very different yeah. because when I disagree with him, he doesn't feel like I'm threatening his life. Wounding him, <laughs> yes, yeah, no, diminishing no, no, no. him. He's not shame no. avoided. In fact, shame seeking a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, right. No, right. you're right. He's more self focused. Yeah. yeah. And he knows that. He's preoccupied. Self preoccupied. He is very preoccupied. Yeah. Almost O C D preoccupied. Yeah. With it's more in that zone. Yes. Yeah. And I think really I'm probably the first person he dated that went, Hey, snap out of it. Where, where are you? What are you doing? You know, how did you meet? We, uh, well, we have two different stories. Oh, he gosh. met me apparently twice before I remember meeting him. Oh, that's interesting. Um, we met bowling, uh, a mutual friend of ours brought him bowling and we had separated into teams of couples and singles and we were on the singles team. And when the bowling was over, I said to our mutual friend, Hey, how about you give Bert my number? He's really fun. And I thought in my head, never marrying a comedian. No way. I mean, the inconsistency it'll be just of everything. Fun. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Couple dates, we'll be friends forever because we got along really, really well. Right. So Bert doesn't where, call me. Where was this? This was in Hollywood. Hollywood. This was. So um, you, now you moved out here. Oh, yeah. I moved out here in 97. Uh, For? Uh, I was a writer, I wrote screenplays. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, I lived in New York first. I uh -huh. had to get out of Georgia. Uh -huh. I was like, I got I wasn't happy in Georgia. Yeah. So I moved to New York and then I moved here. Are you still doing the writing? I'm not. I'm okay. doing the mommy. You're going back to that, do you think? I would like to. Okay. Um, so the, you're playing bowling, you're bowling, give the number. Bowling, give the number, no call. So I call our mutual friend and say, what, what happened? I'm like, I'm a cute girl. Why didn't he call me? And he says, ask him yourself. Hands birth the phone. Oh. And I go, what's up, dude? I mean, we had a blast. Why didn't you call me? And he literally was like, oh, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. And I said, you know, if you ask me out, I'll say yes. I had this sense that he was terrified right, right. of me. Oh. Um, and he goes, well, do you want to go out on a date? And I said, yeah, that'd be great. So we organized a time. Apparently, he hung up the phone, turned to our mutual friend and went, she just wants me for my body. <laughs> Now, at the time, he weighed 185 pounds. Right. He was really lean. So, so it was not completely delusional. Not completely. As it might be now. Got it. Not got completely. It. Not present day Bert. Yeah. It was actually like really hot Bert. Mm. Oh, there so, was a hot Bert. There was a hot Bert. So he shows up to pick me up for the date, thinking this is like a booty call, right? And I'm dressed for a date. I'm a Southern girl. I'm uh. dressed like for a date. Uh. And he had a panic attack in the car. Uh -huh. His shoes were too tight and he couldn't keep his shoes on. We went to dinner and he could, he kept wiggling. And I was like, what's going on? And he was like, I got to take my shoes off. I'm so sorry. Did not eat a single bite. He was nervous. Would not let me leave the date. The date went on forever. He kept going, okay, let's go one more place and have dessert. Okay, let's just go one more place and have one more drink. Okay, let's just go to Ralph's and pick up a 12 pack and go to your place. And I was like, dude, the date's over. And then 9.30 the next morning, he called me. And this was his line. It's so cheesy. He called me and go, so, what are you doing this noche? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go, well, this noche, I'm going to yoga. How about you? He's like, yeah, I'll go to yoga. I'll go to yoga. No so he's, he, every day he called me every single day at 9.30 in the morning. Wow. What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tonight? Wow. Yeah, so that's how it started. Well, it doesn't sound like it started. It started and, and hooked right there. It started. Well, you know, I wasn't super hooked in the beginning. I was like, oh, he's really fun. He's really cute. Again, Wait, was two this weeks now? Now, morning. by the way, you with the compliance, you know, compliance because of your mom. Were you compliant with the nine thirty stalking? Were you just sort of going with it? You didn't I really thought, want to? I, no, I thought it was kind of cute. Okay, uh, right. you know, for once in so, Hollywood, someone let you know how they felt. Okay. That's what I felt. Okay, that he he can't help himself. He's so excited okay. to talk to me. Okay, and that was refreshing. You know, at that point, I was thirty one, and I'd been dating guys for you know years, yeah. and that didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, he's really sincere. 
you know, and then if he would not, he, you know, I think, I think I, I, I think I was more than he was expecting, you know, because I wouldn't let him get off the hook with his like, I'm a cool guy. Shit. Oh, right away. Right away. Yeah. And I don't think we've he, not known like, that bird. Tell us about that. The bird. cool guy shit. No. The, cool guy. What are you when doing? I think this cool guy, I, that is a bird I've never seen. <laughs> And when I think of cool guys, I think of some of the guys on our videos. So I'm sure he's not that cool guy. No, no, no. So what kind of cool guy was he? He just, you know, was too cool to call me his girlfriend. And I was like, dude, you call me at 930. It's like a frat every... boy? Yeah, like a frat boy. No. Yeah. Thank God he got over that. Well, I said to him, I'm 31. This is not my first rodeo, dude. You can't be saying stuff like, this is my girl I'm hanging out with. Mm -mm. Either I'm your girlfriend or I'm not. How long into the 9.30 a.m.? How many 9.30 a.m. calls before you had that talk with them? Probably like a month. Okay. Like this is... Uh, you're hanging out now. Yeah. We're, uh, yeah, for real. If you're calling me at 9.30 in the morning, you like me. Yeah. So why are you bullshitting? There, I don't have any room for that. Yeah. Um, and so I think he went, oh, okay. And then we... <laughs> he probably won't like this conversation. Oh, but, I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of girlfriends, right? And yeah. I'm a pretty powerful girl, you know? Mm -hmm. And my girlfriends are pretty strongly opinionated and mm -hmm. he's pretty frat boy. And mm -hmm. we went to the LA County Fair with a bunch of my girlfriends mm -hmm. and he uh, made an ass of himself at dinner. What, um, Bert? Yes. What did he do exactly? We got in a conversation somehow about uh, lifting a girl's skirt like sneaking behind a girl and lifting their like, skirt. Like how crazy that is that somebody like, would do that? Like how offensive that is for a girl yeah. to have their skirt lifted like in public. You know, Trying like to figure school. out how that conversation got going. But, I don't really but know. Bert was there, so I'll just take my cue. I don't remember it. who started it, but he was like, oh, girls just totally overreact. It's no big deal. And so this table full of women were, you know, oh, of course, like... Pull out their machine gun. <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hashtag me too. No, and, and he just dug in on this topic and was going to win this argument about how girls overreact to stuff like that. And I was like, dude, you're the wrong guy for me. Oh, I can't do this. I need a break. Oh, wow. I need a break. Right there at the table. How no, long? no. That night we got home. I waited. I, again, being Southern, you don't do anything like that in public. Yeah, sure. We got home and I was like, I need a break. I can't really hang out with somebody who says it's okay for me to be kind of, you know, Sexually aggressively abused, sexually abused, yeah. violated yeah. in public if it's not sexual is personal yeah. you know i'm not okay with that so we need a break <laughs> and i think that's when he figured out um he needed to get his act together that was the end of frat boy Bert. i think that was the end wow yeah. well thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you for putting an end to that my pleasure I, yeah well done because uh we would not be we would not know Bert kreischer if he stayed that guy no, I don't yeah. think you would have. No. no. Yeah, interesting. Because he's the, when I first met him, I can't remember when that was, that was not the guy I met. No, and you know, that's not the guy he was, really. Mm -hmm. I saw the guy he was, really, and kept going, why are you being this other person? Mm -hmm. I don't understand this facade. What would he say? Uh, no, this is me. This is really me. And I'm, it's actually not. Because if you're saying, I'm not your girlfriend, but you're calling me at 930, your behavior is lying what you're saying. And if you're, you have two sisters who you adore and your mom who you adore and you're telling me lifting a girl's skirt is a girl overreacting, they don't match. So I actually believe the way you behave. I don't believe what you're saying. And what would he, how do you respond? Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I bet, yeah, no, I just know. a bunch of, you know, Bert shuffle, you know, the oh, old God. Bert shuffle. <laughs> and then he comes back. He always, this is one great quality about Bert is he's very self-reflective. He'll come back around. He comes back and he goes, I see what you're saying. That makes sense. Of course, because he's always, he's always thinking about himself. So. He's always thinking about himself. <laughs> so, always, always. So when you raise something about himself, he's going to think about it. He does think. He obsesses right. over it. That's good. That's the OCD. It's all good. It is. And then he self-corrects. I mean, like after that evening, he brought flowers to all of my friends with written apologies. Wow. And then made me a mixtape oh, wow. of all the music that reminded him of me. And when I finally showed up at his house... He was in the shower, drinking Slim Fast and crying. Uh. <laughs> so I knew that he really loved me. <laughs> oh, please get me some sort of video reenactment of Bert drinking Slim Fast, crying in the shower. Yeah, he couldn't. Come on. He couldn't really. He couldn't really. He couldn't really eat. Oh my God! Because I had left him for How? four whole days. Four days. <laughs>
<laughs> had you had previous long-term relationships? Yes. And it was any like this in no. any way? And no. How, how are they different? I was always the, of the two, the more uh, colorful person. He was definitely the most colorful person I ever dated. I had this favorite uncle who had passed who was very colorful like Bert. And I didn't really think, you know, you don't think, oh, I fell in love with my uncle. But a lot of times I go, oh, you know, that's something that one favorite guy loved him. I was always so drawn to his personality. Mm -hmm. And Bert has a similar personality. I was dating these like, you know, three piece suit guys. Right. You know, really safe guys. Yeah. And I think, you know, my dad, the, my simple, sweet dad, when I was in my early 20s said to me, you know, I was complaining because all my girlfriends were getting engaged and they were getting married and they were having kids and no one ever asked me out or I was, you know, three months in and I'm bored. And my dad oh, said, you were the one, you're the one who got bored. Oh, I got bored. Yeah. yeah. Was like that. Yeah. So my well, dad. Uh, so I think that's more the issue because it's impossible to get bored with Bert. Impossible. <laughs> well, my dad said to me in my 20s, he was like. You, oh, honey, you're not going to get married for a long time. Uh, you're going to have to find somebody really special because you get yeah, bored too fast. Yeah, but you didn't think fast. it was this kind of special. No, it was a little more special than I bargained <laughs> for, I have to say. A lot of days I go, what was I thinking? <laughs> I mean, seriously, this was... Very special. Very special. So we're back to your daughters yeah. who are... I, I, I find them nothing but delightful whenever I have an Oh, thank you. I mean, you. really, like, they're, they you. seem like exceptional girls to me. Thank you. Yeah. They're Though they have to survive... Bert. Uh, and I don't mean as dad. I yeah. mean, like, as the persona, uh, some of the stuff he discusses about them in public and things, yeah. which he told me that one of the things that stood up from my last interview with him, he was saying how Isla finally watched one of his interviews and she thought all he said was like nice stuff about, yeah. about her. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, she discovered that no, not so much. How's she doing with that? She's okay. You know, I think okay is a broad term overall she's okay but she doesn't like that her dad is known now she doesn't like the fame no, no she doesn't like that she doesn't like that she's known we had some podcast people show up to do a podcast and um they asked to take pictures with isla mm. and that really bothered her yeah. it really bothered me yeah. first of all but it really bothered her yeah um it's funny, I had the same exact experience, experience with my kids. You did? Yeah, where we asked them to do some stuff, then they resented it later. I'm like, well, why'd you, we could have told them. We didn't know. We just, right. We just going through our business. And Right. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy world. And we've tried to kind of, from the very beginning, when we first had Georgia, Bert and I talked about how this is going to work, because obviously the nature of comedy is you're on the road. So I was like, I think the only way this is going to work is if you are really just a dad when you show up at home. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just plugged in, mm -hmm. you go to softball, you make dinner, yeah. you pick up drop off. Of course. Not homework, but... Oh, he's not into homework? Oh, he's dyslexic <laughs> as a father. <laughs> so, so no, no Bert homework. Wait, wait a second. Bert is dyslexic as fuck and his wife is a screenwriter. Yep. Who do you think helped him write his book? Oh! <laughs> no, he wrote every word, yeah. but I edited it. You made it sensible. I was like, that's not a complete sentence. Can we start that sentence over? I get what you're saying, but you've said the word that five times oh, in one oh my, sentence. Oh so God, can you just so take funny. four of the five that's out? That'd be awesome. Uh, but anyway, um, I think for Isla, for the fame, uh, for the stories, um, I don't really completely know. I'm finding my way through parenting that. Yeah. You know, because we are discovering that both Bert and I are a lot more open than our kids about a lot of things. Well, that's oh, kids are always opposite whatever you are, essentially. Are they? Pretty much. I mean, they'll take on some of your stuff, but they'll, they'll define themselves against you. Let's put it that way. That's does interesting. That make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, of course, your stuff will be ad adopted and it's, it affects them in some way, but, but they tend to kind of push against stuff the parents are doing. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, we're finding our way with that with Isla because we thought Isla would have no problem because um, personality-wise, she is a lot. She's very similar to Bert mm -hmm. um, and as far as her, her persona and what she presents. She's not wired like Bert. You know, Bert's kind of fragile in his wiring. And that's more Georgia. So, can you describe for us any speaking of his fragility? Any times in which you learned new things about him, like new insights, new aha moments with him, um, good, good or bad? Yeah, he's uh, you know, he's very perceptive. As as self focused as he is, 
he is really perceptive and he has he's a very good judge of people and a lot of times he will see things i don't see i'm a pretty good judge too because i grew up watching my mom's behavior so closely to figure out how to manage life yes that i'm really good at that with people in general yes. but he a lot of times will see things i don't see and i'm a glass half full person and he's he can go glass half empty really fast mm -hmm. and sometimes glass half empty is accurate mm -hmm. and i don't see it so a lot of times that happens he is and has always been um like uh he he can see the future of this industry hmm. before it happens wow. i've been really impressed being with him 17 years now what he sees as what's coming next and it happening hmm. that amazes me what's he see coming next Did he talk about it um, about everything being online and so, so it's all video and yeah, all this stuff so networks going away and everything being streamed and how much does he really drink a lot now you mentioned before the mics heated up that he was looking to set up a new studio yes but he has some criteria yes <laughs> yes it has to be walking distance from our house because because he drinks on his podcast uh, and he wants to be able to walk home. Oh, no Ubers? Or skateboard. skateboard. Or skateboard home. Well, and skateboard. He's going he's to break his head open <laughs> on a skateboard. You know, he's surprisingly... How old is he? he well, you know, it depends. Mentally, emotionally, just, physically. How, physically, because that's what the skateboard is going to do in. Yeah, I don't know. He's, he's Mickey Mantle. I'm pretty impressed by that gene. The, the alcohol gene. Well, that and the ability to like run a marathon with no training oh, and, yeah, you that. know, all that yeah yeah shit he does where i go i can't even walk up the stairs without training half the time but he hasn't actually lost control right and because he was able to stop occasionally he still stops you know, this is the confusing thing about his um alcoholism quote whatever it is i'm not convinced yet by the way i'm not convinced yeah. either because when he stops he just doesn't drink yeah and he doesn't really have he doesn't sweat he doesn't shake he doesn't well, that's, that's that? neither here nor there. But but if he can stop and not be preoccupied and not take no, something else and no. sort of stop for a while. Yeah, he does. But it's not often. And he goes back. He always yeah. goes back. It's not often. It was obviously sober October. But other than that, he'll have a week or two here where he doesn't drink anything. And I don't even really notice it. Mm. You know, I don't that's notice a different in his personality. How about flying? Is that still a thing? Yeah. So he has to drink for flying still? I think that's an excuse. But yeah. <laughs> I've told him that myself. I think it's bullshit. I think if he can white knuckle it once, he can do it over and over again. As, as long as we're bringing up his drinking. So a yeah. uh, treadmill and a box of wine, those things, yeah. those things go together for you? No, no not for no, me. No no. no, no, no. Not really for him either. Really? Nah. No. Didn't, didn't he used to do that? No, yeah, no. I think that was merely, you no. Know, that I, was just for I think that was, that was for Instagram. All right, Folklore. that was just for the video. Got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, the, the boys here are very excited because they think they're going to learn something about birds. So, okay. So what secrets do you have? What can you divulge about him? It, either just, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be stuff we could use against him, just stuff we don't know. Uh, but if it's stuff we can use against him, so much the better. Well, he's a really big slob. Um, you okay. probably could have figured that out. But he does this thing. He uses a squatty potty, if I remember right. He does use a squatty potty. Because I, I, um, I used your guy's bathroom once. Yes, time. <laughs> he is obsessed with the squatty potty. He's obsessed with the squatty potty. Oh, he can't potty without the squatty does potty. Does he travel with the squatty potty? No, but we do have a travel squatty potty. That is something we did not know. We do have one. That's we useful information, one. There you, go. you need to understand. <laughs> knowing that he travels with a squatty potty. No, he doesn't. Oh, but he, he doesn't. has the ability to, which then relieves him of the stress. I see. You see? Because it's possible. It's possible. That's the way he works like things have to be possible okay yeah. not necessarily happen um he uses <laughs> he cleans his ears out with q-tips and mm -hmm. he thinks it's really funny to put them in odd places so we find them later like oh. on the door jam uh, that's nice uh like uh he puts them like in my daughter's nightstand so she opens ever put them in like their cereal disgusting. or anything weird? No, no nothing no, like that nothing terrible no, no. nothing with food are you mm -hmm. kidding i'm just saying <laughs> you know he's gonna rupture his eardrum doing that <laughs> that's going to happen i don't know he does it every day it's you should see him do it he, it does, is, it he makes the, this face is the leading cause of cause of <laughs> and he, he uses one side and two q-tips at the same time and same face every day i call it his work face because he also does that when he's doing anything with a tool will you please take a picture of that and put it on instagram <laughs> please, god i will yeah. next time he uses a tool okay, good. Yeah, for sure. no no the, the, the thumbnail yeah. The, oh, of me? No, no, no. no. Of I, him. I want him with the Q-tips. Oh, with the, the Q-tips. The full thing. Yes, I can do that for you. The, the full Monty. 
Um, no, the Q-tips are the leading cause of uh, ruptured eardrums in the country. Well, maybe that's why he can't hear me when I'm talking. Maybe. Maybe he's actually already done it. Does he have any other uh, disabilities other than not being able to hear his wife? And dyslexia. And dyslexia. Yeah. Um, and anxiety. Anxiety and OCD. And, and he's a alcohol. catastrophe thinker. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I get a lot of his catastrophe thinking. I think he presents himself to the world very, not very differently, but somewhat differently than what's actually going on completely inside. So his anxiety gets dumped on you. Yes. Women love that. I don't. No, they don't love it. They, I don't. They, women can't, they don't like that. I don't like no, that. I know, women don't like it at all. They, and yeah. uh, I've found that to be true. Well, we joke all the time that he's 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 the female and I'm the male. Because oh. I'm pretty much the same human all day, every day. All right, we're going to take a little break from the show. I want to tell you about our friends over at Third Love. They use data points generated by millions of women who have taken the Fit Finder quiz to design bras with sizes and shapes that are perfect for you. More sizes than other brands. The Third Love offers more than 70 brands, including their signature half cup sizes. Skip the trip. Find your fit with Third Love's online fit finder. Order and try them on at home. No more awkward fitting room experiences. My uh, partner on radio at KBC Radio, Leanne Tweeden, swears by these guys. She's been supporting them for a long time. There's a 100% fit guarantee. Every customer has 60 days to wear, wash, put it to the test. If you don't love it, return it. Third Love will donate to a woman in need and you get your money back. Third Love's team of expert fit stylists are dedicated. They're fit stylists dedicated to help finding your perfect fit. And they're available every day via text or chat if that's what you want or by phone. Hands down, the most comfortable bra you will ever own. Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash Drew to find your perfect fitting bra. Get 15% off your first purchase. What the hell? What do you got to lose? No matter how big that purchase is, 15% off with Third Love. Number, spell it out, thirdlove.com slash D-R-E-W. Again, thirdlove.com slash Drew for 15% off today. Now let's get back to our show. Well, he told me a story. Uh -oh. We have a little video uh -oh. of where you, it's sort of pertinent to that topic. Oh, really? It's in a sexual environment oh, okay. where you were being very sort of matter of fact and he was yeah. very sensitive and feminine. Yeah, he's very sensitive. May, may I play it for you? Sure. I saw it, I think. Um, so I'm about to have an orgasm mm -hmm. and as she sees into my face, <laughs> she just starts giggling and goes, oh, look at him. Oh. <laughs> and it took it away. It didn't, I mean, I, I, the stuff came out, but the actual orgasm oh. went away. I was like, whoa, what the fuck did you just do? So then the but next sort of like baby mommying you a little bit. I don't even know. It's the way she talks to my dick. Like if she sees my what? dick, she goes, oh, little guy. Oh, yeah, she guy. doesn't. She's not. Yeah, she doesn't look at my dick and go, whoa, look at Thundercock. <laughs> well, so, yeah, so pleased to know sorry. You, I'm so pleased to know you. It's so good. Well, you know, the thing about talking about sex, people ask me all the time why I, quote, let him, like I could stop him. Yeah. But you, we right. all have sex. Yeah, it's yeah. not like. No, no. Married people don't have sex no, and, no, and don't do fine. stupid stuff like go, oh, little <laughs> guy. Look at that little guy. But I only say that like when he's showering, not when we're having sex. I would never say that when we're having sex. Is he's it not little. Warm water or cold? <laughs> Either. Okay. It's pretty little. <laughs> when he's not you understand, in that environment. This, this is going to be on our, all the Twitter feeds. This, this is what they're going to Oh, I don't promote. care. Okay. Whatever. Right. It's all good. Everybody's married. Everybody's seen little that. Little guy. Oh, that little guy. Um... Well, why not, as long as we're watching Bert, let's let's look at a couple other videos here. Let's. Um, I knew you would show that because when I watched it, I went, "Oh shit!" It was my favorite part of the show. It was yeah. Because it was so vulnerable and it was so funny. Yeah. So everybody can like relate to it. He is really. very vulnerable yeah. in that time. He's very fragile, and I didn't mean it as a condescending like. I didn't mean it. You like understand mommy. for for every male on earth, the comedy <laughs> is that he lost his orgasm. We don't care what you do. <laughs> right, right, right. It was perfectly reasonable. I didn't mean for him to do that. <laughs> he, I wasn't he had, trying. He had an orgasm without a climax. It's crazy. <laughs> so this next one is uh, Bert's view on unassisted sleeps and how he thinks oh. both you, Leanne, and Drew are aliens for being <laughs> Oh, I see. I He's the kind of person that at the end of the night can turn off the lights. This is going to sound so sociopathic to you. Turn off the lights, turn off the TV, <laughs> no drugs, no alcohol, get in bed and close your eyes like a fucking Mormon. Just like, well, that's it for me. I'm done thinking. 
Clunk. I can do that too. Oh, f- what the fuck's wrong with you I people? Know. I know. <laughs> You're done thinking? That's when I start thinking. That's when my brain's like, let's talk about the diseases we think we have. We're pretty sure we're developing a baby arm because we have ALS. <laughs> This is actually what happens in his brain a lot. Does he? Does I know? I get it. He's, he's got. He's, that's the catastrophizing and the anxiety and stuff. Yes. Does he actually bring up diseases and stuff to you? Yes. Oh no! You got to call me when that starts. Oh, Seriously, it happens. Seriously, I can bail you out of that in a second. You know what's so funny? This was a learning curve in our marriage. Okay. Remember, I grew up on a farm. Yeah. Remember, like my dad shattered his thumb with a jackhammer and splinted it himself and never went to the doctor. I mean, like that's who I grew up with. He is a, an alien to me in the way that he manages his coping, which is almost non-existent. So when something happens, like um, <laughs> he had a spot on his face right here. A spot, like a zit? Just, no, no, it was like a dry patch yeah. in his beard. Yeah. And I was like, it's a dry patch in your beard, just shave your beard. Yeah. He's like, it's definitely cancer. For 100% it's skin cancer. I'm like, dude, it doesn't even look remotely like anything I've ever seen. I, I to command be that getting... you call me when these things get going. <laughs> but, I, I insist. But I'll say to him, just get over it in the beginning of our marriage. And that was far worse than saying, why don't you just go have it checked out? So, okay, so let me get this straight. So you used to say, hey, dude, get over it. Yeah, just get and, over and it. And it's no would, big deal. Would he get angry at that or just oh, escalate? It would escalate. Escalate the And I was, um, I was discounting his feelings. <laughs> And I was um, not validating oh, what was going on for him. Oh and gosh. we've had this conversation a lot as what we've been to Bert married. Crusher? Is I keep saying, but I'm like the voice of reason. If you know yourself to be this spiraling, catastrophe thinking, tornado. obsessive, compulsive. Tor- tornado. Tornado. Yeah. Then what do you want from me? Would you like me to jump in the tornado and intensify it? Yeah. Or do you want me to kind of calm it down? Yeah, yeah. And I think he really wants me to intensify it. And I just can't do that. Mm. I think that's very unhealthy. Now, I don't want to discredit how he's feeling. I don't think he wants to intensify it. Did I think he... he does. Sometimes. Because he gets really angry when I go. Is that gratifying in some way? I don't know. No, next time you just go call Drew. He'll talk, ask, ask him. Like, <laughs> I'll so, do that. Seriously, just go call Thank Drew. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Well, this, if, this he how bad he is. if he does it more than about three times, he'll, we'll have a talk. Okay, this is how Trust bad me. he is. I have this great doctor that I love, I've had forever. When we first started dating, he was like, I guess I need to get like a regular general practitioner. I called her ahead of time and said, listen. I'm going to give you this guy. <laughs> but just so as you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I would appreciate that. He'd be call. on the phone all the time. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but it will give me an opportunity to straighten him out a little bit. You know, if he, if he calls more than about three times, then we will have another kind of talk. I would it, love it, that. Yeah. Really. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Okay. I'm good at that stuff. All right. This, uh, this next clip is about uh, how Bert uh, deals with his reward system. Okay, this, oh, is the, this is the other favorite oh, part of oh, that, of that oh, interview oh, for oh, me. Oh. This yeah. is why he's not an alcoholic. He's a reward system person. He's treats. I, I have a problem with treats. Like, I need treats. I always want treats. I can't live a life without treats. <laughs> like, like if I, that's, it's, I need making white a treat, a hardcore treat. Okay. And, and sometimes after I make white, uh, <laughs> I get depressed knowing I can't make white immediately again. <laughs> so my, my treat has been taken away for me, from me. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to drink. <laughs> yeah. This is another ongoing issue we've worked uh, with in our marriage is, the um, treats. The treats and sometimes are, the, are you a treat i am a treat yeah yeah and making so, white is a treat with me yeah but i also i get that he's because he's compulsive we can't just do it once we gotta like <laughs> no 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 that's no. that's not it so much okay, as right. it, uh, it the joke used to be the way the treat would work best for him is if i were nude on the floor at the threshold of the front door so when, when he walked in from being on the road he could just have sex with me like in the front door and he and he pretty much said that's right well you understand for 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 most men that's right except they know never to say that <laughs> they, well, know, they know never to say anything like that i guess but yeah. he also but most men don't travel every week so right. then think that every you know monday at noon when i get off this plane yeah, it, yeah. and then i feel like every monday at noon no matter what's happening i'd better be you know, ready. ready. I, I used to joke and say, uh, I'm the bunny, he's the bear. Mm-hmm. And the minute he walks in, I'm like, ah, oh my God, I'm just going to hide behind the furniture for about 20 minutes so he can calm down. That's the way I feel like. And he just bats me around the room until I go, fine, let's just get this reward over with so I can enjoy does this he, in a couple days. Go, does he bat you going, treat, 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 <laughs> treat? 
yes, pretty much. Oh my god. Oh my <laughs> but god. But I'm not bored. I think I think we need to do a reality show where we just run cameras in your house. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's, we can edit oh, together. Oh no, yeah. he's an interesting fella. That guy. What's Bert the wildest Carter. treat he's ever given himself, or you've ever given him? Um. Uh. Well, I'm sure it's something sexual. Those are the, those are, that those are the best treats. For him, I think so. He has a treat he hasn't given himself, but he keeps saying he wants to give himself, and that is a Harley Davidson. Oh. And his uh, wife. Yeah, no. Veto. Yeah, I've, so, I'm, I'll veto with you. I'm not a. He won't. That. I don't think he'd survive a Harley. I don't think he would either. Yeah. Even though he's had the lessons. Oh please. <laughs> I mean, I no. don't. I don't know if he's wired for that. Really, I think he thinks he is, but I'm not sure. But no. um. The biggest treat he's ever given himself, you know, he did give himself a big treat. He went on a big trip with Ari and Steve Renazizi and a couple guys to go snow skiing recently, oh, and they nice. had a blast. Oh, that's cool. And he kept saying, this was my best treat, because, you know, another part of Bert is that he is really, he really is kind of a white picket fence guy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, where he really feels like if he has downtime, he should be with the family. Yeah. And I, I've said for years, but you need you need you time too. Like yeah. you can't just be working and then just come home and be dad and then working and then dad. Sometimes you need to just go blow off steam that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, yeah. And he finally did that this that's year. Good. And he was like, oh, that's what I'm is, talking about. Is it exhausting to be his wife? Sometimes it is. Mm. Um, it is extremely rewarding. Mm. Um, he is um, a really generous human being. Even though he is self-focused. Let's not get to that yet. Let's, let's, oh, no? Okay, let's but he is. Back. He is. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. But sometimes it is hard. Um, when he gets in that tornado yeah. of catastrophe thinking and panic, yeah. it is exhausting. And sometimes he gets um, a joke all the time and say, uh, if I could just put a baby Bjorn on and put him in it, he'd be really happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really kind of an introvert that's really social. So I kind of need you're, to, you're shy, but, but you're able, you can navigate skillfully socially. I just, I, yeah. I recharge my batteries by being by myself, yeah, yeah. like, you know, going for a walk, go for a hike, take a bath by myself. Mm. Um, and then I go reconnect with people. But if I'm with people too long, I start getting really cranky. Yeah. Yeah. And he literally would like unzip my chest and crawl inside when he comes home and just stay there. And yeah. then some days I'm like, dude, I just, need, <laughs> I need to like, I'm going to walk the dogs. How about that? Oh, I'll come with you. And I'm like, shit. I just wanted just 15 minutes. It's and called, it's called escaping Bert Kreischer. It's your new, well, that's your new screenplay. Really, that's your first screenplay. Uh, right. Escaping Bert. You have Bert. to go back. He is really intense in every way. So what Bert? I know. So after a long period of intensity, I, I need like, he seemed quiet. even more intense lately. Am I, am I, is that true? Yes, it is true. Yeah. Um, I think the perpetual motion of this past tour yeah. has got him on a real intense train. Yeah, um, yeah. When he comes home, we have a group of friends we do a lot with. He wants to be everybody together every day. Mm. And I'm like, oh, we, it's a school night, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do that every day, but that's what he would like. Everything really intense. And I don't really know what that's about. There's no rest for him lately. Yeah, he just he's sped. It's like his engines just turned on a higher it speed. It is, yeah. and he's not resting. Yeah. The unassisted sleeping is not really happening. No, because he's so. Is he taking something to sleep? A uh, glass of wine. Uh, but he's doing that all day, so that. No, not all day. Uh. He doesn't drink all day. Okay. He starts at like when we start cooking dinner. Okay. So he drinks while he cooks dinner. Does and... his personality change when he drinks? No. Same. Same bird. No. Uh, let's go. I want to flip to, can we, uh, you guys into Bert's dad? Yeah. I thought this was really interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. One second. Yeah. Or do you want to, would you rather go in order? It's okay with me either way. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's uh, go in order. Yeah. Let's go in order. Okay. So, so this next one, uh, Leanne, maybe you have some more, uh, stories that you could elaborate with. Okay. My I heart skips. If a celebrity walks in the room, my heart skips a beat and I am impulsive and I can't I can't. Who, who would you actually fool, make a fool of yourself in front of? Uh, who? Name it. Brad, who, but, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Would drive you crazy. That'd be crazy. Oh, but the go Rock. Next. The Rock. Oh, oh <laughs> the Rock. This no is, women. Mm, oh, that's nah, interesting. I don't really give a fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Misogyny. I mean, I mean like I'm sure if I, <laughs> not, but I don't have like I don't because vestiges I, of, the, it, of the there's pro. a pure th ah. This is gonna sound really fucked up. Here we go. There's a pure thing with me if i if i see another male celebrity there's a pure thing going on where they know i'm not trying to fuck them they know there's no oh. edginess i'm you, i'm a fan you just I'm admire a fan. Them. yeah 
So okay. are there any stories, Leanne, where uh, where you've seen Bert in public approach someone to just kind of bro down with? Huh, that's a good question. I, I... Did I did I tell him where I made a fool of myself with the Shit's Creek cast? Did I, I think, no. I think you might. Oh yeah. yes, you did in this yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what occurred to me is I, I I've done that. I've been an idiot of myself. Oh, I've done it too. Yeah, I've done it one time. It was embarrassing. Um, but uh, you know, I'm another interesting thing about a relationship. I don't hang out with him like socially in that circle. So anywhere we would meet anybody, like he goes to the store. Although I've never been, never seen him at the store. <laughs> you know, we just I'm just we're just like an old married couple and he goes to the bank which happens to be the comedy store right work, but, but i mean it, that's sort of what happens when you have kids the age your kids are yeah you're you're home centric or you're softball baseball whatever yeah, yeah. school everything is it really revolves around the kids yeah so that makes sense so i don't know if i i, I know he geeked out once when he was out of town and we saw the rock <laughs> And he made what us with the rock video. To, he what do you think? Let's go deep. On this loves one. the rock. Why? What do you think that is? I think that um, the rock had this thing where he was trying to inspire people to be better people. Do you yeah, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Bert really liked that. He really okay. thought that was very kind of noble that he's this big guy and he cares enough about other people to go, hey, we could all be great. And here's what you need to do. Bert has that little bone in him where he wants everybody to be their it, best it, self. Now I, I, I'm sort of. I, I, I'd say I'm a fan of The Rock. I'm yeah. Good. But I, but some of the stuff he does, you know, have, it's, I have blessed day. Everything's blessed, yeah, yeah, blessed, yeah. blessed. It's like, all right, dude. It's like, really? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. You know, that's a bird has a little flair for drama. Okay. So he likes uh, even so, that part. He yeah. likes all that. And, all and, uh, and is he like jealous of how Rock looks? Or, no. or was he jealous of the wrestling career? Did he want to wrestle? Bert is probably the least jealous person I know. Now he'll go, why can't I? I, I look like shit. You know, look at the rock. I look like shit. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, but yeah. not like I wish I had that. Yeah. Just uh, comparing himself and saying I'm a loser. Mm. He does that more than saying I wish I had what someone else had. Right. You know? and, and he did never, was he into wrestling as like a kid or anything? Oh, he's from Florida. Oh, so he's into wrestling. Oh, Rasslin? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, what, pardon, what, yeah. what else other was sort of white trash stuff is he into? Uh, he <laughs> no, was, no, no offense to the rest no, of the No, no. Hey, I am from that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is he in NASCAR? We don't know. No, him. he's not okay. in NASCAR. He was really into wrestling. Um, but the he, WWE type stuff? Like yeah, he'd go, yeah. He'd go to WrestleMania and all that No, stuff? I don't. Oh, no. His dad's too. No, his okay. dad's too white collar for that. Oh, no, right, right, right. But he, he's an interesting... He's an interesting person that came out of his parents who... You know, her parents are very, his mother is very like old money, like had servants in her house. Oh. Like her dad had a helicopter, you know, oh. and then uh, her we, dad is a lawyer. We discussed the mom. What, what, does she work or she? She was a school teacher forever. Now she is like some accreditor for a big like child care, national child care center. Um, oh my God. So, yeah, but I don't know how he came out of those two people. How, I mean, were there other siblings? I forget. Two sisters. They're yeah. younger than he is. Uh, and uh, his youngest sister is very similar to Bert. Much worse, I'd say much worse anxiety mm. than Bert, mm -hmm. but really successful in her field. And mm. they're both really sweet, sweet girls. But interesting. You know, he never wore a shirt. He wore Speedos all the time and speedos. moccasins. Oh, he lived in Speedos. S That's all he wore when he was a kid. Speedos. Speedos. You yeah. guys know what Speedos are, right? Well, he wears them all the time now as an adult. What? I thought that was just a joke. I no. Thought... Oh, no. The first time we went camping, we went to... What? Cattle. Yes. He wore a Speedo for four days straight, slept in it every... It had like sweat rings on it. It was uh! disgusting. But he was like, this is where I'm most comfortable. I think he might have sensory processing stuff because he I can't might. do his shoes. Yeah. He can't tuck in, button up. Can't. That's why he wears like baggy pants and baggy t-shirts. I, but I, I mean, how how restraining is a bathing suit compared to a speedo? Good question. I I don't have anything down there to restrain. Has anybody so ever addressed the speedo habit with him? Like, do you ever notice when you walk around the beaches in California, you're the only one with a speedo, Bert? I, I don't think he does, minds that. Does he wear it on the beaches? Yeah. <gasps> With our kids. Ah! Always has. Oh, your daughters are not going to allow that con to continue. They're uh, not going uh, to allow uh, it. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Now that we're in teenage years. Oh, maybe not, it is going to be on. I can't wait for that conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. He tried to get Speedo to like um, sponsor him. He, I understand he, yeah. that, I, but I thought it was all just shtick. I no, didn't really actually like No, any. I have pictures, I'll send them to you, of I mean, him as a small child wearing a Speedo. I think, always. I think I wore a Speedo when I was about four maybe five no he's like 10 11 and and, and 
I've never seen an adult male wearing a speedo if they weren't didn't have a cap on with a number on the side and they're about to race right, hundred right? meters or in Europe. Uh, yeah, right. In well, Europe, come to my house, Drew. <laughs> he wears them all the well, time. I see. I saw it on Instagram and I thought yeah. that was for the comedic flair. No, it's comfortable. He'll wear board I, shorts. I think when we leave this interview, that's thing's gonna haunt me. <laughs> Burton is Vita. Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. And it must get more and more glorious as he ages and drinks. Well, it gets smaller. <laughs> the Speedo. The little guy. The Speedo You're just gets the little speedo. guy. <laughs> and people are sending them these Speedos with like the rebel flag and like oh, one's got great. covered in hot dogs. And, oh my God. Uh, one's got an eagle right on where the little guy lives. This big eagle like, Rawr! and he loves them. He thinks they're amazing. Oh, yeah. we, you need to do a whole series. Tell him to do an Instagram series on his A on calendar. His calendar. We should do a calendar. Speedo calendar. <laughs> <laughs> with composite. Uh, uh The dad. Let's get into some video with the dad here. Yep, this is the last one we have prepped from the episode, and okay. here we go. I was an attorney. Is he cool with your job? Now he is. For, yeah. He just came out on stage with me um, the other day. Is he still practicing? Still practicing. Wow. He He's always been cool with my job. He hasn't figured it out. He doesn't understand it. He yeah. doesn't really get it. Yeah. Uh, like, even my story, when I tell a story, he's like, what? <laughs> what? Why does anyone think that's funny? <laughs> uh, he's never seen me perform. Never seen me perform live. Never seen me would perform. Would it be weird to have him there? Uh, now it would. But who told us, guys, who told us about their dad coming out on stage with them and then he got hooked? Do you remember this? Uh, what, what was the question? Who, who told us about a dad that came out on stage with him during a comedy event? I thought it was Bert. And Brad he got Williams. hooked and he then kept, was it, was it Brad Williams? I, one, one, I thought it was Bert in my memory, but I can't remember who it was. But they said the dad came on, he introduced him at one of his events. Yeah. And the dad like kept calling him for like three days. Like, hey, that was fun. Hey, I can see why you like doing this. No, that hey, was how Al. Can I do? It was Al. Yeah, right? Al That's did that. Yeah. Bert, oh, yeah. Right? He did. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah, go, yeah. I can see how you can really get into that. That was really great. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That to me was sort of a tell. Yeah. <laughs> it starts to make sense to me now how... Bert comes from that dad though, because that's dad's alter ego, right? I no, I say you kind of, you kind of, you you can kids can push against their parents. Right. There's also a theory that that the sons end up fulfilling their dad's fantasies. Well, here's an interesting piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Bert's mother was a very hardcore into musical theater, had a recording contract, and her dad said, "You will not be doing that." You will oh, be a teacher or a nurse interesting. because it's the 60s. So she became a teacher and married a lawyer. Got it. So really he got it sort of from both. Al, Al Bert's dad, um, is, is where Bert gets his anxiety. Al has a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Um, Gigi has no anxiety. <laughs> and I mean, like her whole family, the first family event, she is one of nine. She's the only girl of nine Catholic, uh, Philly family. And the first event I went to, they were literally fighting over the musical instruments to sing and perform. Oh. So it's in the I family. think he got it from both sides. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of, lot of very, I mean, you could do, you could learn a lot about human psychology and development. Studying, you sure studying could. Studying Bert Kreischer. Yes, you could. Let's do a couple of uh, emails and, uh, oh, this is a good one. My name is Steven. I'm 23. I've been dealing with emetophobia. What is that? Fear of vomiting. Since I was about what? 15. There isn't a day when I don't worry about the possibility of vomiting, even though I feel completely fine. It's gotten to the point where I avoid foods, activities. The fear has affected my relationships, career, overall. It's okay. So when something is truly a problem is when it affects relationships and, and functioning, right? right? So it's career, finance. This is a real serious thing. Any advice getting over this fear, I'd really appreciate it. You need something called exposure therapy. I don't know how they do exposure therapy for emotive, emetophobia, but this is this is in the spectrum of what Bert has. This is an OC, obsessive compulsive disorder kind oh, of thing. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, it's not that uncommon. But if it's starting to affect your functioning, you need to say somebody has it. Go check out the IOCDF.org, in, International Organization of Compu Compulsive. Wait, uh, ICDF.org, International Compulsive Obsessive IOC. Uh, yeah, International <laughs> Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Federation. IOCDF.org. And uh, they have lots of resources there for this kind of thing. You know, Christina actually says that she has a metaphobia as well. Christina? What's a yeah. metaphobia? Or am, am I saying it wrong? Yeah, a, 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 a metaphobia. Is Christina a, a voicemail? 
Um, no, she doesn't have a voicemail, but I'll tell oh, you. Oh, our Christina, Christina no, yeah, P. Yeah, Christina P. And you know, with exposure therapy, I'll tell you, uh, showing her videos of people puking does not fix it. <laughs> it, it's, it that's sort of that's how to evoke it. <laughs> you, you don't you don't you don't just start screwing her up by grossing her out as much <laughs> and as making so it worse. Like, however, <laughs> however, I must I must say the impulse would be overwhelming to do exactly that. <laughs> so I, I well, how do you have me, that fear when you have babies? I know, right? They throw up all the time. I, I, I'm going to bet that we should. You should ask her, but I'm going to bet that the baby vomit doesn't bother. That's my bet. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it does smell different than it. It sort of has different human. everything to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's not, not that sort of stomachy thing. Uh, you have a voice message for us. Hi, Dr. Drew. I have been dating this really great guy. He's so sweet. He's so smart. He's wonderful. But he has this gross habit of he'll scratch himself and then put it in his mouth oh. or he'll rub his eye and then his finger goes immediately into his mouth. Like it's so quick that you're like, did that just happen? But it's really grossing me out. I don't know how to address it. One day he's going to pick his nose and put it in his mouth and I'm going to lose my shit. How can I bring it up to him without embarrassing him? Oh, is there a name for this? I have an expert in dealing with difficult partners. <laughs> Meet you know, Leanne Crusher. My husband scratches himself and then smells it. Of course he does. Of course. Uh, of course and, he does. And I go, do you realize that you've just done that? Maybe you don't realize. Does he realize? No. He doesn't realize. No, he doesn't. Okay, so we're going to assume that maybe this guy is maybe. an old habit. Is it, yeah. Something you do in private and then all of a sudden it bleeds into yeah, yeah. public because he's so self-focused. He doesn't right. realize anybody else is in the room. So how do you deal with that with him? I just say, do you realize that you just did this? And he'll laugh at himself. He'll go, no, I didn't realize I just did that. But he still does it. How about this lady? What should she do? I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe asking innocently. Is this something that you realize that you're doing? And, and if not, maybe you should think about I, that. I never I think it's, it's within reason. It's never really a problem to go, you have a habit I've noticed that really bothers me. Oh. And I'm sorry, but it really, it's hard for me to, and I, and I think you could correct it. And, uh, and, and I want you to, and, and even take it like, so I want you to be a better person. I mean, it'll bother other people too. So maybe you didn't know, I'm wondering if you use, always use wonder, wonder. I wonder if you notice that you do this right? and go, and then sort of, if it doesn't go anywhere, you have to, you have to really bring the hammer down and go, I can't be around this. I'm not sure I can stay around you at all. If this right, continues, right. you have to really be ready to do that. But bringing it up should be no problem. I wonder, I wonder if you ever noticed that you have this habit. Yeah. And it might, you might be able to. Might be improved. Might might bother other people the way it drives me out of my mind. Yeah, right. Mm. Uh, I have a longtime friend. This is from uh, more guy friend than girlfriends. I have a longtime friend who I'm convinced regards me more as my. Well, I have a longtime friend who I'm slightly convinced regards me as more than a friend, despite her having a boyfriend and not saying so outright. She has only mentioned that she values the time we spend together and only wishes we could spend more time hanging out. Uh, we live a nine hour drive apart. I believe this to be the case because we talk and joke about things I don't really think friends would talk about due to the nature of the topics. They are very personal and private. She also said that she finds herself getting along better and tend to hang out more with guys than with girls. Is this a guy? David, yeah. I was wondering about your thoughts on the behavior. I thought it was peculiar that she gravitates towards casually spending time with her guy friends as opposed to her girlfriends. We'll comment on that first. That's not unusual. Some women just, some men get along more with women. Some women get along better with men. They just yeah. more comfortable. That's all. Yeah, you. I agree. I had no girlfriends yeah. until I was in my thirties, which makes sense. You had your dad that was a reasonable yeah. relationship, and your yeah. mom was made you know, cat in a hot tin roof. That's right. Yeah. yeah. As far as I know, her home life and upbringing are similar to most traditional households. Her father does travel a lot. She also casually refers to her father as daddy. Eh, you said daddy. When I you say did. daddy yeah. all the time. So take know. that as you will. Although I'm inclined to think it's more playful. Blah blah blah. Not Oedipus. Blah blah blah. Um, so. Uh, I would argue that there are plenty of people, David, that um, particularly women maintain a bullpen. Oh, interesting. And it's at a certain age, it's more prominent than at other ages. Uh, men do this too, but I've noticed women do a lot of it. And uh, it's usually when they're kind of not happy in the relationship, they're trying to get their current boyfriend to comply. Even if you're in the bullpen, it doesn't mean you're next for boyfriend. You're just next pitcher. You're maybe just the closer. You may not be. You may not be playing the next game. 
Um, you may be even a, a roadmap to what she's trying to show her current boyfriend. Nah, Look what, no? It doesn't, it's because the boyfriend never knows about these guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, these I are missed just, that. This is a bullpen. And, Got it. And the, those long talks and stuff, that's that's her call, calling the calling up the coaches in the pitching in the pitching war in the warm up thing how's your arm how's your arm right. your arm okay that those long emotional talks yeah your arm's good all right you may get up to the mound one of these days i'm not sure you know your contract's coming up but uh just uh, just keep your arm warm that's that's what that is how funny that's what that is uh emetophobia my name is theo i'm a long time mommy and i've been working very uh very physical job for a good amount of months now i love it but I've noticed that while wearing my work boots, sweating and working, I have a toenail that needs to be ingrown. Uh, my doctor was supposed to fix it, but it has come back again. Are there any tips or tricks? Oh, boy. Uh, should I go back to my doctor and have him try it out again? Uh, thank you for the language uh, and the mommy fandom. Uh, these are really difficult. What they have to do with them ultimately, that if you keep, they keep getting infected like that, is a dermatologist or a podiatrist or somebody who does this commonly. They mm. cut the nail in half and they tear it out. Oh. Or they tear the whole nail off sometimes. Oh. Um, they numb it all up so you don't really feel it, but it does hurt a bit the next day. But you have to you have to do something definitive. And sometimes they come back even then. Really? And you have to, they may have some advice. Maybe go to a podiatrist and get some advice on shoes also. So they can get something that's not helping add to the, the ingrown toenail situation. Voice message. What's up, Dr. Drew? What's up? My name is Joey Danger. I have a hard time with these rehabs, these Malibu rehabs. These, I see all these fancy rehabs all over the country that nobody I know, I'm an average guy, could afford. What is the benefit of something like that as opposed to a traditional, no frills, I got no money yeah. kind of 30 day rehab? And if there's not, how could somebody like me get into something yeah. fancy like that? What do you say? Is it Joey? Is that his name? Dan yep. Danger. Jo Johnny Danger. Johnny Danger. Johnny Danger. Johnny, you were one of my favorite callers. It's not a sort yeah. of typical Dr. Drew After Dark podcast, but uh, that is a fantastic question. And here's what you need to know. No frills usually is better treatment. You add all that cost and all that. You gratify people and have them in a beautiful environment and give them stone massages and stuff. That is not what people need in early recovery. They need just the basics. They need a room, they need medical management, they need psychological care, and they need meetings. And you don't have to pay for that. There are free services out there. They're called 12-step meetings. You can go find them all day long and just raise your hands, tell people you need help. They will help you. They will sit on you. They will take you in. I, I'm telling you, all the, the way we've turned this, this treatment process into these luxury experiences is anathema to what the patient needs. Now, if somebody insists upon it, whatever, but it's not like you're missing out. If, when people want to get well from alcoholism and addiction, they'll do whatever they have to do. That, that's when I know somebody's ready to get well. They just, they just go tell me what to do and I will do it. People get well immediately as soon as they start following direction. So as soon as you're ready to run the, the white flag up, I guarantee you there are lots of help right where you are. Start with a 12-step meeting, go online, have them pick you up, go to the meeting, raise your hand, say, I need help. I don't know where to start. They will help you. It's that easy. It really is about a decision, I think. I mean, I wasn't, I, I don't think I was an alcoholic, but I, I remember the moment when I said, I'm done with this. This isn't working. Well, I've, for studied, me. I've studied those moments a lot. Yeah. And um, they're, they're often very much the same. Usually, it's you develop some sort of new relationship, mm -hmm. some sort of new person in your life, or some sort of something where you're able to see yourself with a new pair of glasses. Mm. Like you're looking at yourself through somebody else's perspective and mm -hmm. it's not the usual people in your life. Right. And all of a sudden one day you see yourself with clarity mm -hmm. and you get disgusted. That's exactly what happened to me. Yeah. I got disgusted. And yeah. when you feel that disgust, you change. Yeah. Disgust will change you. Because you can't so tolerate it. I can't tell you how many people have been have said they were like literally walking by a mirror and went, Oh my God, that's dis oh that's me. I'm disgusted. This, yeah. this has got to change. And they change it. Right. Now, if you have a disease, you can't do it on your own. You gotta ask for help. Right. If you're someone who's just in a, a substance use disorder that's not addictive, right. you stop. Right. You do you do other things, you get treatment, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That's, I didn't expect we were going to have that conversation. No. That's interesting. <laughs> so, that is interesting. Um, I feel like we should talk more about Bird. Uh, do we have any, any more videos on Bird? We know more? 
I'm having so much fun watching the, his videos. Those are all the videos we oh, have on, uh, on Bird Prepped for this episode. Oh, so far. But don't worry, we'll have way more prepped for uh, for the reunion episode with Leanne and Bird at the same time. <laughs> oh, everybody, watch out for that. Because now that That got, should be interesting, I've, right? I've got ammo. We're going to play your videos. We're going to play his videos. Oh, yeah. So, so well, well, I but let's 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 finish up a little bit with the fact. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll get into something other than just this, but you know that Bert is a truly human being and yeah. his humanness is all over. It's just splattered all over the place. Yeah. And he's a lovable person yeah. and he's a sensitive person mm -hmm. and he cares deeply about lots of things. He does. Yeah. He's pr probably the smartest person I've ever, ever known. He is really, really intelligent. And I think sometimes people may miss that with the shirt off and the beer in the hand and he's really smart he's way smarter than i am he's sharp too he's sharp yeah, yeah. he doesn't miss a thing right he's really um an excellent businessman really smart businessman he's a great dad we dad from such different we uh, parent from such different perspectives that i think i'm really impressed at how he parents sometimes Oh, he, he's when not go, when good. Go he's not good at holding some boundaries. He, like which one? Like bedtime yeah. or fuck it, let's have pizza again. <laughs> you know that he's not good at that. But he's good at like. Really, but maybe that's some of his guilt for being away so much. It could be. I mean, I, this is something that we talk about a lot. I'm always the bad cop because he doesn't want to be the bad cop. But do, that's do, not fair to yeah. me. Because I don't want to always be the bad cop. Our kids are going to grow up and go, Mom sucks. Yeah. I call myself Captain Wah Wah. <laughs> I'm the one and, that... <laughs> and yet this, is, this role never seems to be, uh, you never seem to step out of it because he always puts you in it. He puts me in it, yes, because he doesn't want to be in it. It mm. makes him really uncomfortable to be in it. But from time to time, he will step in it. And when he does, he's really good at it. Like, we had our kids... <laughs> fake an injury at a theme park so they could get a front of the line pass. Oh my God. And when we found out about it, we were like, absolutely not. Oh. This is not okay. And Bert's perspective was so impressive. It was something I had never thought of. He was like, you know, you guys are white privilege. As a white girl, you walk in that office and they believe you. Mm -hmm. If you were not a white girl, they wouldn't believe you. And mm -hmm. you can't abuse that. Not to mention the lack of ethics in it in general, but you have to be aware of who you are in society. And I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I never thought of it from mm -hmm. that perspective. So he parents like that sometimes in some deep kind of broader spectrum I don't really see. Um, he's an incredibly loyal friend. He would do anything for the people he cares about. And even some people he doesn't really know well. He'd give his shirt off his back to a stranger. He's a really great guy. So we've learned that Bert is smart and he's ethical and he's somatically preoccupied and he needs to call me when he has all <laughs> yes, these crazy medical does. symptomatology. That would make me so I, happy. I, 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 I feel like it's my obligation to you two to save your marriage. I feel like that's <laughs> the one thing that I could do that really might make a difference for you. It would make a difference for him because I literally go, oh, honey, that's so terrible. Oh, Whatever. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, eventually, no big deal. eventually he and I will have a conversation about his anxiety disorder and yes. OCD and stuff. And, that's okay. Yeah. So, and maybe it'll put a stop to some of this. It's part of what makes him a great comic too. Anything else we should know about you or him or your relationship? Do you know, we, uh, we got a really good compliment, not to compliment us, but um, people do scratch their head at our relationship a lot. I'm pr I don't look like I'm, I should be with him. You know, I think people think he should be with a tall, blonde, breasty, you know, and I just look like the girl next door, you know, and I'm cool with that. But people scratch their head a lot. And one of my friends said to another friend, I overheard her saying, they are the most real couple I know. Oh, that's nice. And I thought that's the compliment you want to hear. Um, we are very much a married couple, you know. We, it's, you know, I, I, w I don't, uh, I, I agree that you guys don't, you don't imagine you two together, but it's not about appearances. It's about you're so nice. <laughs> you're, you know, well, at least that you come across as so nice. I, maybe you're able to hold the line with I him. I am pretty nice. Yeah, I am nice. That it, it feels like you're just going to get bowled over by the tornado. Well, and so that's the part that for me, I was like, uh-oh. How's that work? Uh, how's that work? And is um, she going to survive this? <laughs> well, I am also very fiery. Okay. And I also so know I myself probably, very well. I probably just well. don't see that part. So, no. Yeah. And there's and no that, need, you know. Well, and you may have learned to hide that because of your mom and all that stuff. I do hide things pretty well, and yeah. and I'm also really really honest in, 
in the safe relationships. You know, you can't walk up to someone and go, terrible sweater well, you know, that you. you just met. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I can say that to Bert. Don't wear that sweater. It looks terrible. Well, on that's your Southern it's, stuff too. It is yeah. the Southern part, but I am the most myself with Bert that I've ever been with any other person. Oh, that's nice. So that's how I knew I was in the right place. Even with the Q-tips on the door jam and okay. the, you know, You're also going to get shit. me the Instagram of the Q-tips. Yes, gonna, I will, I will. I, I'm going to leave it at that. I <laughs> think that's a nice place to stop, that okay. you're able to be you. And, no, no, the Q-tips. I'm not talking about the Q-tips. I'm talking about her, Leanne being able to be her authentic self uh, around Bert. And, um, and I think we have a sense of who you are now too. So thank you for sharing. And yeah. uh, we'll see them both back for a follow-up reunion show. Oh boy. Yeah, it'll be good. <laughs> Lots of video for that. But until then, I'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.